All right, what's up everybody? Today what I want to talk to you about is how I fillet striped bass. Now if you notice right when I got started I had two different knives and I really like to use the two different knives to accomplish two different things. So the first knife I'm going to use is this serrated knife right here and this is what I'm going to use to make my main cuts. Now I know a lot of people choose to use just a straight fillet knife for everything but I don't know I feel like it gets through kind of the thicker skin and bigger scales of striped bass and it just makes it a lot easier. So that first cut I made is right behind the pectoral fin and I angle it back towards the head and then my next cut I'm using the backbone as the guide and right here what I'm doing is I'm actually just gently kind of running that knife along the rib cage and gently peeling back at the same time and what that's going to do it's going to release that fillet from the fib the rib cage and make it so much easier to get that whole fillet off so there you see me doing that going all the way back to the tail now a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll actually cut it before um, at the tail end before I do that so I don't have to go through that whole part I did there but um, that time I left it on so I'm gonna do it again here on the other side now I don't know if it's just me or if other people have the same problem but one side is always harder for me to flay at the other side I think it's just because I'm right-handed and a little more uh, comfortable using my right hand it can make it a little awkward when you're filleting but it's the same process so I just go ahead and I make that cut behind the pectoral fin again I'm sliding the tip of the knife down the backbone being careful not to leave too much meat. This is really where you can mess up and you can end up leaving too much meat on the filet or on the carcass itself and, and make your filet look pretty bad. So I always take my time doing this. You're in no rush to fillet these fish. So you can see I'm touching that backbone with the tip of the knife and just slowly putting those, moving that knife over the rib cage and over that backbone. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep making those same incisions. Now, also, you can stick that knife through and just like a traditional fillet, fillet it all the way down. And this is what I should have done on that first fillet, but I made the correct move on this one. And now I'm just working my way back up um, and peeling it away from the rib cage and the other areas of the fish that I don't want on my fillet. So once I get this fillet off, I actually caught two fish this day or decided to keep two fish this day. So I'm going to go ahead and fillet another one really quick. This next fish that I caught, um, I filleted it pretty well. So I wanted to show you just how quickly you can do it. So you're going to go ahead and get that same knife again. It's the serrated one. I use Dexter Rustle and I love the Dexter Rustle. It keeps a good edge. I've had that knife now for almost 15 years um, and I've never sharpened it since it's serrated, but it's never gotten dull on me. So there we go. That cut behind the pectoral fin, running it up along the backbone, and just the tip of the knife doing that. I know for smaller panfish, I'll use the whole knife and just fillet it whole, um, but with these bigger fish, it's really tough to do that. So now I'm gonna peel it back again from the rib cage. You kind of get the process here. And once you get it down pretty pretty quickly, you can see it's taken me about three minutes um, to get, you know, three minutes and 20 seconds now to get these three fillets off of there. And then the other side took me another about 45 seconds, but I skipped that for you. So one thing I always do when I fillet fish, I always check what's inside the fish stomach just so I can understand what I need to be using the next time I go out fishing as far as like lure choice. Today, they're eating menhaden. So when I went back out the next time, I made sure my bait looked just like that. Now here's the most important part, I think is making sure that you trim up the fillet. I like doing it before I skin it, but I'm gonna go ahead and trim it out, cut some of the rib meat out, cut some of the other stuff out. Sometimes I'll save that and I'll use it in soups or stocks, but today I gave it to the seagulls. They were pretty hungry today, so. Um, but then what you're getting, I'm getting my Dexter Russell, and this is a nine inch fillet knife that you need sharp. You kinda go down first towards the skin, and then what you're doing is you're pulling it, as you're pushing the knife, you're pulling the fillet towards you, the skin towards you. So it's like an opposite, um, opposite motion towards those both things. So let me show you it again real quick here and I'll do it for a few of these different fillets just so you get a good idea. Put my knife down and get down to the skin. I'm gonna turn it sideways and as I pull the fillet back by that skin, I'm pushing the knife forward and kind of wiggling. It's not really, you know, it's, it's less that it's less work of the knife and more just pulling the knife through the fillet than anything else. And we'll do it a few more times for good measure just so you guys can see how I do that. This one needed to be cleaned up again. 
you know, sometimes I like to skin them and then clean them up. Other times, I don't know, I do it this way. I don't think it matters either way. Drop a comment and tell me what you think. Is it easier to clean them up after you skin them, or do you skin them, or do you clean them up and then skin them? So drop a comment. I'll be curious to what people say. All right, so then we got that filet. Gonna go ahead, go straight down to get a good angle there, straight down to the skin, make that little notch, hold on to the skin there, and just pull that knife, or pull that filet skin while pushing the knife forward. And you can kind of see how perfect it comes out there. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it gives you a good idea how to clean your striped bass when you bring them home. Um, you know, there's so many different ways you can leave them whole and all that type of stuff too, but I really like them filleted. I'm gonna cut these ones up into rockfish nuggets and hopefully I'll show it to you later. Have a great day. See you on the next video.